Good morning and welcome to Almost RV Perfect. My name is Dallas and you may know I'm working on research for my own van build. Today's subject, solar charge controllers. Let's get to it. Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. I named my channel Almost RV Perfect. And the reason for almost well, I have the bug. I want to become part of the RB, RV community. And I'm probably going to do my own build. But I keep hearing things like, if I had to do it over again, or I'm going to start with this and then change to that. Well, like I said, I want to do my own build, but I only want to do it one time. So I'm going to use this channel to do the research. It's going to work like this. I'm going to post a question. I'm going to ask for comment. I'm going to collect all the comments, put them in an organized me method, and then do a follow-up video to share this information with everybody else. Now that's how it's going to work. So stand by for a question. Here's the question. If you could do it over again, what would you keep and what would you change about your solar charge controller? day here but it's really windy so I don't know what we're going to get. A solar charge controller is the device that sets between your solar panels on the roof and your battery bank on the floor. In an RV or camper van solar system something has to control the power coming out of the solar panels, condition it and put it into the battery bank. The confusing part is that solar panels monocrystalline or polycrystalline are rated in watts. 100 watt solar panel. The solar charge controller, PWM or MPPT, is rated in open circuit bolts in and conditioned circuit amps out. Batteries, flooded, AGM, lithium, are rated in amp hours stored. And of course, all of this is industry standard 12 volt DC power. I agree with you. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, before you, before you go, I got this. And the reason I'm going to share this information with you is so that you don't spend money you don't need to spend. Solar panels are expensive, hundreds of dollars. Batteries are way expensive thousands of dollars. The solar charge controller sits between the panels and the batteries and its job primarily is to protect the thousands of dollars worth of batteries. So it's worth your time to get the right solar charge controller. For solar panels you heard me say monocrystalline or polycrystalline. Don't worry about it. It's Coke and Pepsi. For solar charge controllers, you heard me say PWM or MPPT. Don't worry about it. It's Amazon or eBay. For batteries, you heard me say flooded, AGM, lithium. Don't worry about it. It's a golf cart, a Chevy pickup truck, a Tesla sedan. Very simple. Solar panels all come with a data sheet. Sometimes it's just a sticker on the back of the solar panel. And back there, it'll tell you how many volts and how many amps that solar panel can produce. You simply multiply the volts times the amps watts. It's that simple. A solar charge controller has maximum values you need to understand. That controller has the numbers 130 printed on its face. The 100 is not watts. The 100 is the maximum volts that this unit can handle in, and the 30 is the maximum amps that it's going to produce out. So, from the data sheet, if you were to take four of these panels, hook them together at 18.9 volts each, that totals 75.6 volts. 
the charge controller is perfectly happy with that because that's under its maximum of 100 volts. The number 30 is the maximum amps that this unit can put out to the batteries. Back on the data sheet, each solar panel puts out 5.29 amps. Four of them together, 21.16 amps. The controller is happy because it's under the 30 maximum amps that it can deal with. If you in the future decided to add two more solar panels, which would give you 600 watts of solar, and you added up all the amps, you'd be at 31.74 output, and that's too much for this controller. For 600 watts of solar, you're going to need a 35 or 40 amp solar controller charger. So that's all the technical stuff. Just start with the data sheet. Volts times amps equals watts. A solar controller with 130, the 100 is the maximum volts in, and the 30 is the maximum amps out. And solar charge controllers are sold by their amp rating. That's not a problem. Just do the arithmetic for the number of panels that you have, round up, and that'll tell you how big a uh, controller you're going to need. If you don't know the amps of your solar panels, there's something else you can do. Just take the watts of the array, all the watts of the array, in our case 400, divide it by 12, that's the 12 volts of your battery, and that'll give you something like 33.1. Well, round up. So you're going to need a solar charge controller that's at least 35 or 40 amps. Some easy stuff. The solar charge controller is actually user friendly. You have to hook the solar panels to it and you have to hook the batteries to it. On the face of the solar charger there's going to be a section called PV, photovoltaic. That's where you hook the solar panels. And there's going to be a section called BAT, that's for batteries, and that's where you hook the batteries to it. The charge controller has smart circuitry in it so that it will not overcharge the batteries. Once it realizes the batteries are full, it just simply stops sending power to the batteries. During setup, there's two things you, you need to know. One is, mount the solar charge controller as close to the battery bank as you can, because that way you're using short wires, and the shorter wires, the better. Secondly, it's better to attach the battery wires to the controller before you attach the solar panel wires to the controller. Start with the batteries. There's a reason. Your solar panels may already be unboxed and mounted and facing the sky. And they're generating power and there's no on and off switch on those. So the instant it, you touch those wires to that controller, that power's got to go someplace You've already got your battery hooked up, it goes right into the battery. If you have different solar panels, but you want them all to be charging your batteries at the same time, that's fine. You can do that as long as you have multiple chargers, and they're all the same format, and they're all the same charge profile. There are two styles of solar charge controllers, something called PWM and something called MPPT. PWM, less expensive than M. PPT, but they both do the same thing in transferring the power from the solar, the solar panels down to your battery bank and they monitor the batteries so that they don't get overcharged. For smaller systems, 100, 200 watt system, PWM will work fine, but for systems over 200 watts, you want to use MPPT controllers. The MPPT version is more expensive than the PWM. It's more expensive because it has more features. One of its primary features is that it is programmable. You can set the input values, the volts from the solar panels, and you can set the output profile for the batteries you're going to be charging. Advantage for being programmable, if you've thought ahead, you can expand your solar array by adding more panels and or you can expand your battery bank by adding more batteries. You can use the same controller by just changing its programmable input and output values. The MPPT controller may very well have a temperature sensing circuit 
which means you can take a temperature probe, attach it to the negative post of your battery, and it will keep track of the temperature of the batteries. Batteries don't like to be extremely hot, and batteries don't like to be extremely cold. With the temperature probe, the controller can monitor how comfortable the batteries are. A helpful feature for the controller is the display. And the display will tell you how many volts are coming from the solar panels and how many amps are going out to the battery bank. And it will also tell you how full the battery is. However, one of the problems, as I stated before, is you need to put that controller as close to the batteries as possible. It makes it more efficient. But you may not be able to see the display. So there is a remote display that you can mount at eye level and there's a simple telephone wire that runs between the display and the controller. It's just plug and play. The improvement over the remote display monitor is Bluetooth. Some uh, controllers have a Bluetooth module and with Bluetooth you can pair your smartphone to the controller. And then on the smartphone, with a free app, you can view all that's going on with the monitor. Well, we've covered a lot of ground with solar charge controllers. Next for me is research on solar panels. Be they fixed, or flexible, or tilted, or portable. Should be a lot of fun. For the research, here's the question. If you had to do it over again, what would you keep and what would you change about your solar charge controller? If you have a controller you really liked, we'd like to know that. If you have a controller that you had to replace, we'd like to know that too. If this video helped you understand the basics of a solar charge controller, hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe. Four things. Number one, subscribe. There's a little click right under my chin. Click that little red thing and up comes a bell notification. Give that a click. You only have to click that one time for the whole channel. And every time I post a new video, you'll get notified. If you're watching this on a cell phone, the subscribe option is down below the video. Number two, comment. Not everybody has their own YouTube channel. So this is an easy way for you to share your experience. Just start your comment with the first word is SCC, Solar Charge Controller. I'll collect all the comments, I'll organize them, and put them in a follow-up video. Number three, share. If you know somebody who's interested in van builds and this type of research, hit that share button. With that, it'll bring up a social media option that you already know. Four, research. If there's something you'd like me to research, Put it in the comment, I'll see what I can do. Again, this is Dallas, and I'll see you in the follow-up. For those of you who are new to this channel, hit the like button. Here's a reason. For you, I have listed 12 videos on this subject. A lot of the videos already have a timestamp, so you can slide across and quickly see what I've already discovered. Enjoy.